Okay, so facilitators quotes of CR patients. So basically, you know, these patients, um, they feel like they're supporters and being in a group and their beliefs are also, you know, that what help them get through cardiac rehab. Since it's, you know, it could be very scary to do this by yourself, definitely. Um, you know, there, you know, a, a husband, he said, uh, I quote, my wife is my main supporter. So, you know, when you have people who support you, it's so much easier to get through, you know, cardiac rehab and everything else. Group, group cohesion. So, um, one person quoted, um, here we have the same problems, same concerns, and the same world. Here I see the other patients are like me, and I, have, I feel like I'm like them. When I exercise alone, I give up easily. But when I'm here, I exercise with other patients. I enjoy it, and I feel powerful. So, you know, some people like being in a group. I think that's kind of, you know, with patients who have, like, an athletic background, maybe. They feel like they're in a group, and it just empowers them. You know, I think that usually can be in you know, some kind of athletic background, definitely. And also beliefs. Um, you know, a woman said, yes, it's expensive for me, but I think if patients really understand the value of rehab and its positive effects on their health, they would easily invest in it. So I think that's one thing, um, you know, these things, these, these factors are very important to cardiac rehab patients, you know, just believing into it, having a group of people and having your supporters definitely will help you. So now we're getting to issues with cardiac rehab. So now, uh, according to research, 20 to 70% of eligible patients do not participate in programs fully, only attending half of them. And phase two patients are less likely to participate in phase three. So the questions are, why cardiac rehab patients do not fully commit to the program? So I was really interested in understanding, like, is it self-efficacy or depression, low income, motivation? Like, what is exactly of these patients not being able to, to come in, you know? What is stopping them? Um, why does the attendance of phase three decrease? Is it money? I mean, like I said before, you know, phase three is a voluntary, involuntary, you know, I mean, sorry, voluntary phase. Uh, you don't, you're not, you're not required to go. It's kind of a self thing. So what is it, you know, um, which I can understand, um, you know, money, but it's, I think it's one thing it's, you know, like the person said, um, in the slide before is that your health is a good thing to invest in. Definitely. So, um, like I told you in the beginning of my presentation, I really want to look into depression with these patients. Um, you know, it's very, very prevalent. You know, the incidence of depression in cardiac, cardiac patients is very high. It can range from 15 to 65 percent. Uh, depression has been long considered a risk factor in cardiac disease and is associated with increased anxiety scores, increased PIM, physical activity, and reduced adherence to secondary preventive behaviors or outcomes. So basically, cardiac rehab. You know, people who are depressed don't want to do this. They don't want to get out. Because, you know, I understand being in a very low place and everything. And, but the thing is that exercise can improve the health of the cardiovascular system. It has a direct or an indirect effect on risk factors such as BMI, anxiety, and depression. So exercise can help. Um, in not all cases, but it can. And uh, depressed patients following major coronary events have a significantly higher mortality than non-depressed patients. So it's very interesting to know this. Um, you know, it's just one of those things is you know, being happy and um, understanding, you know, this happened to you, but going through adversity is can be difficult to most people, but you know, it has its perks. So a study that I've read um, was a longitudinal perspective retro, retrospective study. Um, use a HADS um, questionnaire to measure psychological well-being for depression and anxiety for 187 cardiac rehab patients in the phase three uh, cardiac program. 
So um, out of all this, the results were the anxiety, anxiety was present in 33% of the patients and depression was presented in 24 of the patients. Although there was no significant improvement within the program, improvements with those who were most depressed and anxious were, study, were shown in the study. So in a way, you know, cardiac rehab can improve the depressed and anxious, you know, in, you know, in, in a little amount of way. Um, although it does take a lot of time to get, you know, to not be depressed anymore. So, um, it's real, it's a real thing. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it takes a lot, it, you know, the psychosocial benefit definitely is real. The depression again. So reasons for depression. Um, men particularly view, you know, cardiac rehab for people who are old, sick, unfit, took risks or needed goals prescribed for them. So as men, you know, they're kind of very egotistical sometimes. <laughs> and, um, you know, they just feel like, oh, you know, this is for old or sick people. Like, I'm not old or sick. So they feel like, you know, their pride's a little hurt and they get down and they feel useless, you know, which is understandable because you just had this unpredictable thing happened to you and you never thought this would happen so and then we also do have high levels of anxiety were reported by both genders and participation in cardiac rehab influenced by overwhelmed out of control or sedentary so yeah you know you can be very very overwhelmed in cardiac rehab because you have a group of people who you know are exercising and you feel like you're out of control you don't know what to do and and um you're not in the best state either, so that can also play a factor, definitely. So, um, like, uh, women reportedly are less likely to receive social support from their family or friends. So, like I said, I mentioned earlier in my presentation, um, you know, women, we don't see a lot of women in cardiac rehab, and usually it's because they don't want to come, and they don't receive support from their family or friends because, you know, they have other obligations. They have families and they need to take care of their kids and everything. So it's, you know, one of those things where women just, you know, I don't, I'm not sure why they don't receive support from their family and friends, but I guess, you know, they have different obligations so, to go to. And um, feel like the life will never be the same. They do not accept lifelong changes. Um, a lot of people, when this happens, they don't accept that this is a lifelong thing. You have to modify your whole entire life. And that can be pretty scary. Um, and very hard to deal with. So ways to improve depression and anxiety. Um, there's definitely goal setting. Specificity of exercise. So you really, really want to, they really want you to be happy they want you to do what you love and and again when you come from sports backgrounds like you know boxing or running and all that stuff they want to incorporate those things into your workout into your program um home-based um home-based cardiac rehab is also an alternative i never under i never knew that there was home-based cardiac rehab but um i think that's really interesting to do it in your home you can do where you're most comfortable in definitely will help if you don't especially if you don't like working in big groups so self-monitoring you know you have to keep track of yourself um that can if you keep yourself busy and you keep goals i think that's one way to in improve depression keep consistent uh consistent consistent with attendance to cardiac rehab you know definitely kind of no-brainer but attend phase three frequently and education. Definitely be improved in all this. So the last um, thing I thought that was really interesting, um, home-based uh, cardiac rehab on self-efficacy study. So basically the study was about, you know, um, at-home cardiac rehab and if it increased self-efficacy from the patients. And, it, and a really interesting result showed that they did. 
um, that had a positive effect on, you know, the patient's self-efficacy. And, and this is interesting, you know, I think most people want, you know, it just depends on the person. If they, the person wants to, you know, feel like they're part of a team, you know, and they can go to cardiac rehab in a hospital in a rehab setting, you know. But others, you know, they want to be in their home. And that's all about personality, too, definitely. But, um, so, yeah, this is my presentation. And if you have anything else you'd like to know, just keep asking. I want your thoughts and your opinions. So, um, let me know how you feel and what you think. And thank you for listening to me. Bye.